So practically speaking, intimacy is very different from sex. It wasn't so long ago when sex was intimate and it was scary because to engage in sex is to engage in a very intimate relationship. You become bonded, you become entangled with each other, it's emotional, it's terrifying, it's exciting. When did that stop? In the 60s, free love. Free love meant sex should not be intimate. It should just be fun. We're paying a price for that now. We have no respect for intimacy. In fact, most people could not even define it. What's intimate? Holding hands is intimate? Mm, not necessarily. A kiss is intimate? Not always. A hug is intimate? No, it could be just polite. What is intimate? So it turns out that by today's definition, intimacy means if you're feeling intimate. If you're feeling intimate, then holding hands is intimate. If you're feeling intimate, then kissing is intimate. Okay, so now you meet a friend and you kiss because you're polite. You were not feeling intimate, but the other person was. Now you've got a problem. Me too. You thought, you thought I was being intimate? No, no. No, I was just being... You're not intimate? The opportunity for misunderstanding is absolutely out of control. And it's not true. Intimacy is not a feeling. It's a fact. A man and a woman alone together in a room with the doors and windows closed. Is that an intimacy? No, nah, not my type. No, she's not my type. That means you are being intimate and you don't care. It's not that it's not intimate. <clears throat> it's a violation. You're being intimate with no intentions of being intimate. I'll tell you a powerful story. We have this program in Minnesota for women. Crash course on Judaism. Women come from all over the world for a week, two weeks, a month, maximum. Back in the 70s, early 70s, the women who came to the program had all grown up in the 60s. And they were nonconformist. They would not go to a beauty parlor that was bourgeois, nonsense, insulting to women. They didn't dress up, they didn't use makeup, they didn't take care of themselves. And some of them went to real extremes. There was one woman there one summer, she had neglected herself something awful. The other hippies would not share a room with her. But she needed to talk to me privately. So we went into this little office that I had, had no windows. She was sitting near the door and she closed the door. I said, leave the door open a little bit. She said, why? I said, because a man and a woman should not be in a room together unless they're married. She started to sob. She cried her heart out. And I thought I had insulted her, that she was offended. She pulls herself together and she says, this is the first time anyone treated me like a woman. Now, if intimacy was a personal subjective intention or reaction, 
he could close the door. Nothing intimate is going on here. It was hard to even tolerate her presence. But that's if intimacy was subjective. The fact is, intimacy is a reality. Closing the door is an intimacy. Not because I intended it or she intended it, but because that's the fact, and you can't fool Mother Nature. Holding hands is an intimacy. You're not excited by it? Too bad, you're missing out on a, a really beautiful thing. A kiss, a hug, it's all intimate. And if you're not feeling it, you're getting a little dull. But it is intimate. So, intimacy is a reality. We're trying to pretend, we're trying to play this game. No, 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 it's all platonic, it's all platonic. It's killing us. When a husband and wife walk into the bedroom, it is intimate. Why aren't they feeling it? Because we've lost respect for intimacy. It should be awesome. You close the bedroom door. That is so intimate. Yeah, but I'm not in the mood. That's terrible. The truth is, sadly, the average couple in America, according to the Pew research, the average couple in America have sex once a month, maybe. Isn't that tragic? We're so liberated, we're so sexually liberated, we're so comfortable with our bodies, we're so, we're so relaxed about all the taboos, and we're just not interested. Once a month, if you're lucky. What happened? Sex stopped being intimate. So we don't need it anymore. We need intimacy. We don't know where to find it. Jackie Mason, remember? Famous rabbi? <laughs> Jackie Mason has this routine. <laughs> he goes to Hollywood, and all these people are sitting around not doing anything. And he wonders, are they not employed? So he asked them, don't you have a job? I said, yes, we're producers. We're producing our next movie because the first one was a flop. And we're sitting here trying to figure out where to put the sex scene in the movie. So he asks them, why does every movie have to have a sex scene? And they say, because the movie is simulating real life. And in real life, people have sex. And he says, yeah. They also have soup. <laughs> Why doesn't every movie have to have a soup scene? A tastefully done, of course. It's a funny routine. But you walk away asking, yeah, really? Why if there's a sex scene, it'll sell? If there's a soup scene, it's not going to sell. Soup is good food. <laughs> In other words, what's the difference between soup and sex? We're down to this. <laughs> we don't know the difference between soup and sex. Ask your grandmother, she knows, because she knows soup. <laughs> Soup is not intimate. You like soup? You have soup. You don't want? Don't have. Sex used to be intimate. And people go crazy for intimacy. Unfortunately, in the recent um, 
in the recent past, sex stopped being intimate, it's become soup. You like it, fine. You don't like it, they don't like it. Once a month, good enough. This is really bad. We don't want our sex to become soup. So what is the solution? Make it intimate again. Because it really is. So here's, here's the secret. Some of the secret. Intimacy can happen only in the dark. Sex happens with the lights on. Who introduced sex with the lights on? Pornography. It's hard to take a picture with the lights off. It's pornography. It's about something, not about the person you're with. It's objectifying. It's a performance. You're good at it. You're not good at it. But there's an it in the room when there shouldn't be. A bedroom is a place for him and her. There's no room for an it. So, lights off. No music, no television, no sound, nothing. Not even from the other room. You should be hearing nothing. You should be seeing nothing. And you should be saying nothing. What are you left with? <laughs> Merely each other. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> May not be very practical, but it's also a great idea to have separate beds. Think about it. People are having sex once a month. What are they doing the rest of the time? Sleep. Sleeping right next to each other. How deadening. How awful. Night after night, you're in the same bed and you're not interested. You're tired. Not in the mood. Can that kill a relationship? If you're going to be intimate, shouldn't you at least show a little initiative? <laughs> like, like, get up and go to her bed. Instead of, oh, we're here already anyway, you know. That is so dull. So not romantic. It's terrible. Let me ask you a quick question. In an Orthodox synagogue, men and women sit separately. Why? You're there to pray, not to be distracted. Okay. Why can't you sit with your wife, with your husband? Not with other women, not with other men, just you and your husband. You and your wife. Most people say, because, well, you can be distracted by your wife, too. <laughs> if only. <laughs> that would actually be nice. <laughs> but let's say you can be distracted by your wife. So God is saying, no. If you're praying to me, don't be distracted by your wife. Does that sound like God to you? It's the opposite. God is saying, if you're sitting next to your wife, why are you talking to me? It's not nice. How can God be jealous? <laughs> he invented marriage. It was his idea. He even married you off because every marriage is made in heaven. So he decided you should be married to each other, and all of a sudden he's jealous? Hey, hey, talk to me. No. It's the opposite. When a husband and wife are sitting together, 
How dare you pray to God? Ignore each other? Not good. By extension, you're in the same bed together and you're ignoring each other because you want to sleep? Not nice. So do you remember the old television shows? You've seen reruns. <laughs> I Love Lucy, uh, Honeymooners, separate beds. Everybody had separate beds. And when they were going to be intimate, how did you know they were going to be intimate? They turned off the lamp. Dark. This was normal. Not so long ago. We can bring it back. We can make our bedrooms intimate again. Sacred. We can make our relationships intimate. Because that that's what they are by nature. We're just trying to play games. And you can't get away with that. So we really need to be more intimate. Marriages need to be more passionate. Sex needs to be more holy. And then our families are healthier, stronger. Our children feel bonded to their parents because the parents are bonded to each other. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it.